Hello adventurers and welcome back to my channel. I'm just taking a leisurely walk right now and seeing some beautiful things. It's been fabulous staying in the Colorado area and um, well, I'm pretty happy when I come here. I go from this sense of chaos to this sense of calm every time I step out into this area. And uh, well, I'm really happy this morning. Started off a little weird. You may have seen my moody drive that I took, but then I started exploring a little bit more as the sun started to crack through the clouds just a little bit. And I discovered a whole new portion of the turquoise lake area that I'd never seen before. So uh, yeah, it's been pretty fabulous to say the least. This is my last thing I'm gonna be doing before I hit the road, but um, definitely wanted to bring you all with me. I know I like to show a lot of the views whenever I come to Colorado, and there's a reason for that. These views have the ability to take your stress and just pull it away. And so right now, I am preparing mentally for the road again, and wow, what an amazing way to do it. You can see just over in that direction, that's one of the campgrounds that they have out here. They have some paid camping. They have some basic amenities at those campgrounds. And then they have the BLM, which is only a tiny, tiny drive away. But wow, what a way to start the day. I think you can see the leaves are starting to change. These bushes usually are some of the first ones that you see turning that yellowish tone. And then right after that, the aspens start to go this bright electric yellow. I was hoping to stick it out long enough to see all the leaves changing, but with the snow on the horizon, I don't know if it's going to work out for me or not. I'm just not sure. I'm at a pretty high altitude, and um, when it snows, it gets a little bit harder for me to breathe. So unless I'm here for a while, <laughs> it makes it real difficult. But I keep a little canned air with me, and that really helps whenever I come to high altitude. There is no shame in your game if you buy canned air. Just going to tell you that. In fact, I definitely recommend it. Now, this is something else that I thought was pretty neat. Whenever I turned down this direction, it was called the tunnel. And I was confused as to why, because to my knowledge, there are no tunnels in this area. But I think I figured out what they're talking about now. Do you see what I see? There's a little tunnel. I think that's part of their water system though, so we will not be going to explore that today, but it is definitely interesting looking. There's also this super tall tower that has no antennas on it, uh, no lines connected to it, and it kind of looks like it has a little setup where you could platform up there if you were zip lining, but there's obviously no zip line. So I'm assuming that was used in the past. A lot of things here in the Leadville area you'll find do have origins from well before we're visiting. And you'll find lots of older homes that are just left to the wayside. You'll find lots of old mining equipment that is, again, just left to the wayside. This town has lived so many lifetimes, from the mining industry that brought it up here to the tourism that they have now and everything in between. The Leadville area is one of those that just has a lot of layers to explore. And there's lots of cool things that you can do both outside and inside here. So I come back time and time again and I check a few things off my list and I share them with you guys. But wow, I had no idea this was even here. Just goes to show that the more that you get out and explore, the more you find. And the more you find, the more joy you have. There's lots of little critter holes out here. I've been seeing all sorts of little chipmunks, so I'm assuming that belongs to them. There are beautiful wildflowers everywhere still. And every so often I still get hit in the head with raindrops. So, uh, you know, you give, you take the ebb, the flow. It's beautiful though. And um, it can rain on me all day long and I wouldn't be upset out here. I'd be a little bit soggy, but not upset. Now the area we're walking right now is pretty even. Every so often you'll find some kind of remnant from an animal. Don't know what kind of scat that I keep finding, but there's little pieces. So always kind of be aware of where you're going, but at the same time, always kind of be looking around to make sure that nobody's left any trash. If they have, pick it up. <laughs> In my lifetime of camping, I've probably picked up so many little bags of trash that it's just absolutely disgusting. And people don't think about it, but 
I try to see beautiful places like this and say, okay, yeah, I want to come back there. So I put that in my mind and then it makes picking up the trash a little less gross. Now, I have learned along the way that places like this that are a little bit more removed, that take a little bit more finagling to get to, tend to have some of the best views. But also, on the other side of that, sometimes, because people don't think that it's going to be noticed, they end up with some of the weirdest things. So, again, I, I just kind of always look around, and I encourage you guys to do that too. But, with that said, let's take in a few more views, and then we'll be off to the next part of our adventure. You never know what you're gonna find whenever you find a little pull-off. So I found this one that goes to a viewpoint. And so we're gonna go check it out. Let's go find out where exactly this leads. It looks like it leads into the woods just a little bit. So um, should be interesting. So we're gonna follow what looks to be a path kind of through here and then down. So I guess we'll find out real fast. <laughs> I just have on my tennis shoes today. So I'm hoping this doesn't get weird because these are not the best for gripping but uh I didn't know I was going to be doing all this today thought today was going to turn into a driving day but then all this started to produce and I was like oh we must do these things oh yeah the path seems to keep going so this is good oh wow look at all of the lichen and the moss on these rocks too this is amazing you know once I get out on the road it's hard for me to not just keep going um I really enjoy taking shorter trips because it allows me to have bursts but at the same time I have a hard time turning back toward Texas when I'm in such a beautiful place it just makes it very difficult but I have again an ongoing bucket list so I'll be adding a few things that I've already kind of scouted out that I can't do this time to next year's list so down we go <laughs> this is getting a little bit more precarious Woo! <laughs> so uh, I'm eyes on the prize oh wow this is an amazing viewpoint of the lake I've never seen it from this angle and it looks so much larger from this side than the other side Oh wow. But there's more to this path, so let's keep following it, see what other viewpoint we have. So, uh, yeah. Awesome, this is so cool. And from here you can see the aspens that are starting to change colors also. This is, this is why I love Colorado right here. Like I said before, whenever you come out to places that are like this, you can find so many amazing things from the changing of the leaves to the peacefulness of the water to the clouds in the distance, a little snow on the mountains. It just brings you a different kind of feeling where you feel alive. And it's so, so impactful to my personal mental health. <laughs> Whenever I get stressed out, I think of places like this and how I would like to come back to them. And it kind of sets my mind at ease because there are so many of these gorgeous places out there. But we picked the right time on the right day because there's nobody else out here. So this is amazing. Again, though, there's a little bit further to go. So uh, I'm really curious to see what this viewpoint has to offer because so far this has been one of the most spectacular views I have seen while I've been here and that is a hard one to sell. So we could go up here or we could keep going. Let's keep going a little bit further 
and then we'll come back to this one maybe. Okay, so a little bit more like on a slope here, but all in all, oh wow, it just goes and goes and goes down here. But wow, is it worth it. This is incredible. Just so incredible. Yeah. <laughs> How could you not love that? That is just, wow. That, that's all the words I have. Like it just knocks the words right out of my mouth. And normally I have a lot, but sometimes nature just surprises you to the point that you don't have much else to say other than, wow. That's definitely how I'm feeling. I'm gonna hang out here for a little while and then I'll meet you guys back at the van in a minute. Okay, that was amazing. I'm gonna see if there's anything else on our way out, but Turquoise Lake, you have to come here, guys. You have to come here. It's incredible. Okay, so I made it to another overlook and I thought this is a good way to wrap up being out here, I think, because this one's closer to the campgrounds. Now, this one is the Valley View Overlook and from here, it looks like you can kind of offshoot in several directions. So if you are feeling a little bit more adventurous, this is a really great one to come out because you can actually hike almost down to the edge, it looks like, kind of over in this direction, or you can get the higher viewpoints over here on the rocks. It doesn't have any one specific place that we go, so I'm just gonna show you a few of the higher views on this one, just so you can kind of see, but I'll show you kind of some of the areas you can explore too, because I could be out here literally all day just exploring, and there is a trail that actually goes all the way around the lake also, so if you're feeling a little bit more uh, like athletic, <laughs> that's a good one. Or they have little segments that you can pick up kind of over by the dam and then over closer to the campgrounds. So that's kind of cool also. So from where I'm standing only a few feet away from the van, you can see all of this area is up for exploring. You can see the lake down here. But then I just turn just a little bit here and then you can go in this direction also. And you can see there's a lot of rocks and things that you can kind of explore over to, to some upper viewpoints on this side. And then a turn in the opposite direction and you can see that there's a ton of area that you can go to in this direction to kind of explore. And you can see kind of through the trees right here, this is the water. So the water runs all the way through this section right here. And so you can get some really cool views from around the lake. You know, I was planning on taking us several places today on this video, but I think today is just going to be a dedicated turquoise lake video because we've seen one, two, three, four stops so far, and we're nowhere near scratching the surface of how many cool places there are. At some point, even though I like the BLM camp, I may go into one of the campgrounds just to kind of show you guys what's in there and kind of do a little bit of a review, but that'll be on an upcoming trip. But for now, again, just blown away by the magnificence of the lake and how much larger it really is than it seems when you come up from that first little look at it over by the dam. In fact, over by the dam, it looks like it's extremely low right now. But over here, you couldn't tell me that other than a few maybe sandbars that you can see occasionally. It's amazing. It's just amazing and I can't say that enough. <laughs> But let's go see if there's anything else as we proceed closer and closer to that dam. And oops, somebody else is pulling up to get the same views. Well, guys, I can't show you the campgrounds for sure this video because all of them are closed for the season. So, again, this is going on my list for next season so that I can check it out and show you a little bit more. But they have some incredible ones out here. That's why it is nice that they do have the BLM just to hop, skip, and jump away. Because even though the campground campgrounds are closed, you can still recreate in this area and it allows you a good place to stay. With that said, 
Whenever you start to see the campgrounds closing, you'll start to notice the BLM gets a little bit more full. And so the people who are going to be in this area until it gets to be super cold and super snowy are all going to be in the BLM lands. Fortunately for us, there is a huge piece of BLM just outside of the Turquoise Lake area. Now, since they've been doing some of the improvements out there, which you might've seen in one of my other videos, I'm really excited about seeing what is to come kind of in the future. Also with the outreach, I think that that was really interesting to see that they're trying to help people because they do know that people are kind of stranded in this area because they've come to cooler temperatures from like the warmer areas like Texas or Arizona or even New Mexico. And so they're seeing an influx of that. But with that said, eventually, We'll go check out these campgrounds, I promise. <laughs> now this area right here is where I'm gonna kind of leave us today. This area has had some fires and they've also done some forestry work here. And this is the area that kind of really puts it into perspective about how fragile the world around us is, but also how life can spring out of nowhere. I think it's really important for us to see both the beautiful like areas that have water and trees, but also places like this. Now you can find this section along the Nine. The Nine will bring you all the way out to Turquoise Lake from Leadville. And along the way, you can see a lot of other neat things also, including like streams and things like that. I'm gonna head back into Leadville today to get a few supplies before I hit the road. But I thought this was a good place to kind of end because like all things, like the trees that we've seen that have their bark kind of penetrated by fires and areas that are like this that are just wide open expanses where clearly there once were trees and now there are no more. It really goes to tell you a little bit more about the cycle of life out here and how important things really are. Now some of these areas are clear cut because of the logging industry and then they replant trees in these regions. Others have been devastated by wildfires. So when you look around and you kind of see areas that are like this, find the beauty in them as well. It's harder to do, I know, because it just looks kind of sad, but it's all part of the bigger picture of the cycle of life. And um, because of that, we get some more brain wrinkles. Remember guys, we're not here for a long time, but we are here for a good time. Coming out to beautiful places like Turquoise Lake, definitely are that. I hope you've enjoyed coming along and uh, well, as you can see, we have some more stops to make next time we're up here. Till next time guys, bye.